to your knees. Um, yeah, we have an exciting last hour for the class um, in which our guest speaker who is here with us um, will share their, um, you know, their, uh, their journey with, with being um, someone who has had an intimate or has an intimate relationship with the I just am so thankful um, to this to, to the one to, to my magical friend <laughs> Koja City. Um, Koja City, are you here with us? Um, I am. Um... Sure that you can hear and see me and everyone too. Hey Hi. there. Okay, now <laughs> I do. Yay! Welcome. Um, yeah. Thank you so much again for joining us, and um, I'm super excited for this workshop you're about to lead. Um, and I made this cute little slide for you. Super um, <laughs> cute. <laughs> that that has, um, yeah, the bio that Koji just you sent to me, and so I'm just going to read this real quick and then let you do your thing. Um, Koji City Indomela, uh, pronouns are the one and this one, so let's be mindful in, in using um, the pronouns that Koja City prefers to be, you know, addressed by. Uh, Koja City is a seed steward, a wordsmith, a spirit tender, and a co-founder of Authentic Creations Publishing Apothecary. So this one engages in international writing and speaking opportunities that affirm people of heritage. Koja City, first name, studied wild foods, becoming inspired to apprentice with midwife Daphne Singing Tree at her home apothecary, Eagle Tree Herbs. Um, the one is a graduate of the dynamic and ever-evolving People of Color Herbal Freedom School, where uh, they center the wellness stories and medicines of indigenous, black, brown, two-spirit, trans, gender, queer, and gender variant communities. Um, Kuwaja City is in much need of learning seed stewardship from indigenous folks and eager to enroll in Seed Siva with Rowan White. Um, I, to, to just kind of like add on to that, I met Kuwaja City at um, what we call the Mediocre Seed School <laughs> back in fall last year at, in Denver, Colorado. So Kuwaja City is actually joining us from um, Boulder, Colorado today. Um, and yeah, um, they, the one has also posted in the chat, um, some links where you can explore their products, uh, and the one's products and, you know, help support, uh, what Kuwaja City is doing right now. So can we all give a round of applause or fire up the chat or say hello verbally um, to Kuwaja City and welcome the one today in our class. Welcome. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Can you email me that slide? I'm like, that's better than anything I got. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, definitely will. I'll just, I'll give you this entire presentation so you can Ooh. find it helpful for your needs. I would like yeah. to go back and check that out. Um, for sure. Well, everyone, you're all so beautiful. Thank you so much for accepting um, Mayo, inviting me. Um, I'm so excited. I wanted to start with kind of a welcoming prayer arrival. Let's come into this moment together. Whew. I want to welcome the plants, the animals, the spirits and talent into our hangout today. Um, I brought tulip. And so the tulip is, you can make a poultice for bug bites and burns. And then also the dandelion is edible as well as the rosemary. These little bits of leaves on each sprig. Um, yeah, I always love eating the dandelion. All parts are edible except for the roots. So definitely um, feel inspired to 
ask questions. Um, Mayo is going to facilitate that side and bring in your commentary as you do. I wanted to acknowledge that I am right now in Arapaho territory and that's Boulder, Colorado. Otherwise, I mean, that was a really great intro. I'm like, what else? Um, the first plant I was ever able to identify um, the seeds on my own was the columbine flower. So I just always love for people to think about their first stories, your first connections with nature. I used to garden with my grandma in her garden. I remember like cucumbers and watermelons, um, but mostly dirt. <laughs> So just having fun with my grandma really is what I remember. And I, um, is it called your formidable years? Maybe when I was your age, I was running around in a wild foods community. I had a really lovely privilege of being linked up with lots of people who knew about plants, wanted to go out and explore, talk to each other about them. And that is how I spent a good four years and what piqued my interest in wildness, nature, connectiveness. So that's mostly what I do now from that connection. And I just went out with a friend just around our blocks, um, what's growing in our neighbor's yards, what's growing in the public space. Um, I learned about the cranes bill today as a flower. And... Um, there's, oh, the four o'clock purple flower. And so I'm eager to look them up and find out more about them. I also want to encourage you to look up the plants around you. These aren't necessarily around me, but when I was doing my learning segments, I made these. Just what to know about the plant. A little drawing of the plant, its different parts, where it grows. Um thinking about the metaphysical or the spiritual aspects of plants. And then I've done some more simpler ones. This one, the first one was sea hibiscus, this one's horsetail. Um, so it's like a scour. Uh, I'm gonna look up the four o'clock and the cranes bill because they grow on my block and find out what they do, which is really exciting. These have been in the refrigerator for a few days, but these were a purple flower growing outside of our home. Um, and we were just really curious. Who are you? Who are you? And we now know great hyacinths. They're a bit wilty, but nevertheless great. You can eat their tuber, I guess in moderation. And then you can make tea with the top part. It has like a grapey citrus. I bought a nutty flavor. So... I mostly make medicine. It's one of my main gigs. And um, I co-founded Authentic Creations Publishing Apothecary in 2011. And we it was built off of my work with Indigenous Solidarity and the Diné Nation Supporter Network. And in just helping them, however, they asked me to, I realized I could bring my skills and talents that I already have to their community as well. And so I started doing a free herbal clinic where we made tinctures, brought them there. Mostly tinctures. There was other fun things, depending how you feel. I've been experimenting with tooth powder. Uh, is it like fun antifungal foot powder? Um, foot soaks, facial masks, head to toe. Anything you get from the store, you can make at home. Um, usually easier, more natural, know where your ingredients come from. They slip a lot of things in our food, in our medicine, in our recreation. So just thinking about that. Um, we mostly help people of color who we call people of heritage, people of culture, the global majority, um, and mostly low income folks. We do community care as the free herbal clinics. We do some solidarity packets. We do a lot with seeds, rematriation, which is returning seeds back to their people and or their land. Um, I do love seeds. Um, I make little seed packets. Very into do-it-yourself. 
you can figure it out, um, things like that. Made a template on a piece of paper, and then you fold it up. And then there's also the inner seed pocket. Which is well, just... Sweetie, I'm gonna um, stop sharing my my slide, my screen, so I we can zoom you out. Like, oh, okay. You. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few oh. standout things. So then I made. How do you make just the inner pocket? And let's see. Those turn out like this. Sorry, my chat box, everything got wiggly. And then, oh, it's already open. Put some seeds in there. Okay, there we go. Top it back up. Label it. What does this say? Lemons. Um, and I think a lot of how I started too is just whatever I was in, I put, I got the seeds out of it. Whatever I was doing, I was like, here's an apple. And then I get in that apple. Sort of. This is a tricky apple. Usually there's a star. It doesn't want to come out today, but there's half of it. And an apple can make two seeds per area, so 10 seeds total. So when you open up an apple, you can tell if it was pollinated to its full capacity or not. It can make zero to 10. This one has five, so it's half pollinated. And that is why you wanna plant flowers and showy things for the pollinators to come around and get on their route for the season so that your fruits and vegetables, if you're growing them, if they're around your neighborhood, maybe you're part of a community garden. I don't know, I'm hungry. <laughs> That's the green apple. And then I just, I think these are for like alcohol, but I use them to collect seeds. It's really great to put them in there. They dry out. I love that. And then Sarong Yoon, one of your classmates, is currently our apprentice at Authentic Creations Publishing Apothecary, and that has been really great. We just got some grants for mutual regenerative mutual aid, so we're really excited about that. Yay! <laughs> Yay, we won! <laughs> yeah, it's been really nice, really easy to apply for, no questions asked, really. We've been getting some really great affirming grants, so that feels good. And then Sarong made these labels that we can put on medicine. You write the title in, doo, doo, doo. the ingredients, and that's a hibiscus flower on there, which is really exciting. Um, so then today I was going to talk to you more like plants as medicine. I know Mayo is really into food and your course is about food. Um, you know, I eat apples. <laughs> I don't, uh, you know, cuisine's not really my forte as much as, um, plants in general as medicine. And of course you can eat them, use them as spices, um, ferment them. There's so many ways to utilize a plant, dehydrate it. Um, I love the crock pot. I love the dehydrator. It's not my favorite. You can also dehydrate in the oven on the lowest temperature um, on just like a cookie sheet or put some parchment paper in there. So there's very accessible ways to utilize plants. So I encourage you to go out on your block, go around your block, find some plants, take some pictures of them, look them up. There's a lot of apps right now that you can easily send your picture in and in you know 30 seconds or less you they tell you what it is and I've always had them do it correctly. I don't use it very often, um, but I, I hear good things about those apps. Um, and then you can look it up in like an internet search and something like the plant you're looking for, and then herbal uses, medicinal uses, culinary uses. Um, and sometimes they don't always like cure an ailment. Sometimes they just have vitamin A, vitamin C, they have vitamins and minerals or enzymes for your body. 
um, versus like they go into your tendons or relieve pain or um, headaches or something like that. So just thinking about that and how you can integrate that into your life and also thinking about what ailments you have and if you want to naturally, is this knife ominous seeing? Sorry. Um, yes. So I um, want to also say that plants are such generous givers, so generous in giving and, um, you know, just take a moment to be just so grateful for that and as we receive, we need to have that same graciousness. We need to connect, ask for permission, ask what gifts they want or give them a gift, what we can do for them in this world. We are all stewards of the plants, stewards with the plants, and to think of how to integrate that into your life. Um, most plants are non-toxic, um, although there's... Uh, many names for plants. There's their indigenous names, their colonized names, their kind of regional common names. Uh, so when you're looking up things, check, double check, triple check, make sure you feel really confident about what you're getting, especially with mushrooms. If you want to go forage for mushrooms in the logs, there's a lot more poisonous mushrooms than uh, plants. So you want to really I would recommend you go with someone or be with someone who really knows mushrooms uh, versus whatever the other options are. Um, but there is a lot of options. There's books that are really great to help identify, especially regional books. Um, we're in two different regions, so I don't, if I recommend books. And we're all kind of displaced at the moment. Well, not me, you. You're all displaced at the moment. Um, and maybe not all of you. But there is some displacement happening. Um, encourage folks to be outside, especially during um, this viral outbreak. Outside is one of the safest places. You've got that oxygen. You've got that sun rays killing um, the virus, <laughs> keeping us alive. So that is available. Um, you can also go outside and still physically distance yourself from the people. Um, take safety precautions like that as well. Um, but really getting that fresh air, getting your lungs pumping. We're all kind of getting a little sedentary with our new stay at home lives. Um, or perhaps it's regular, but so, um, thinking, interacting with plants. I want to give you all this confidence. You're, you identified the plants, you're talking to the plants. They accepted your request to pick them and your gift. Sometimes it's really nice to be specific. I'd like to dehydrate you and use you in tea or ferment you or just bring you home to identify you later. Um, just letting them know your intention and also knowing that intention's flexible, checking back in, any kind of consensual relationship. I love to tell people plants are living beings. You want to create a relationship like you would do anyone else. I'm kind of joking right now. It's like easier to make a plant friend than a human friend right now because of our quarantine. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, and kind of when you're like, oh, how do you talk to a plant? I'm thinking it's kind of sensory mostly. How you feel a tingle, sometimes a bee will come by. Sometimes a bee will come by very loudly. I'm like, ooh. That's probably a no. <laughs> and also realize this is a bioregion, right? The pollinators, we share these plants with all the other non-human animals in the world and with the other plants as well. And so to think of that larger, maybe not quite cosmic, but whatever we have on this earth, <laughs> our biosphere, I don't know. I'm not a earth scientist or whatever it's called. So... Just to think of that, we were like a little bitty roll in this huge cosmic thing. And I also love saying gravity like holds us close and just to think about that special gift of gravity and that we are connected to the earth um, a little bit aggressively. We have like a really loving, aggressive connection. So I thought too, because we are in quarantine, there's these viruses going around, I would tell you um, a little bit about... What's it called? How to make a sanitizer. So 
Is there any questions with my long, quick rant about plants? Love them! <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Um, because, you know, the, there have been some students um, who have kind of messaged me yeah. privately about, like, um, I haven't really kind of thought about, <laughs> like, you know, plants as something that is connected to my soul or my spirit. You know, and I, in the first hour of our class today, we we discussed kind of like more on like Eastern medicines and philosophies. We looked into like Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. <laughs> I'm listening. My yeah, computer no just said I'm dying. Like, no oh. worries. No worries. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> we don't want to lose you in the middle of the workshop. <laughs> I even spent so long setting up. I'm like, I've got everything you can think of. I'm like, oh, yeah, plug it in. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So, yeah, we, we, we looked into those examples to try to kind of contextualize what we mean by having a relationship with plants. And, and I think just your personal approach to it, um, yeah, kind of ex- examines a little bit more like what your process is when you're you're out on your block, like getting to know what's around. Um, does anyone have any questions for Kua just, just AD so far in terms of like what that questions or comments about, um, yeah, relating to plants, getting to know them and the process of foraging for them? Does anyone have any questions or comments so far? I have a question. Yep. Well, can you introduce yourself and um, turn turn on your oh, if you sorry. can, Jocelyn. <laughs> sorry. Um, what are your thoughts of the movie The Happening? If you've seen it, <laughs> I'm very uh, low tech. The Happening. Okay. Can you give me a little the context ha- of what it's about? It's essentially where the plants are attacking humans as a response of all the negative actions humans have done with plants and essentially how there's toxins in the air that affect the brain and basically humans are committing suicide (laughs) sounds about right (laughs) Uh, at least that last part right we're literally toxifying our environment and i don't know we think technology will detoxify the environment it's a very vicious cycle of whatever's happening the I mean you all know what's happening Mayo's your professor so all those things are happening we're utilizing the earth at too quickly of rates in ways that it wasn't really designed to do um you know I've seen some memes where people you know it's just like industry capitalism until there's just like one white guy on a throne and like everything is just dead and he's just like yeah you know (laughs) it's like um kind of a sad story um as far as the earth attacking us um i don't know there's definitely cycles you know a lot of the what they're calling natural disasters are actually happening because of industry um capitalism extraction um You know, it is a tsunami, but it is also caused by humans. Um, So there's, you know, we're definitely causing our own demise right now. If the Earth wanted to attack us, I would be like, at least something's happening, you know? (laughs) um, I definitely am a little bit cynical about it all, but we are harming the Earth. We are harming our environment. We literally have toxins in our body, in breast milk, um... We're all toxined up. We were talking earlier. I was on um, a little stroll with my friend about growing plants in toxic soil. And we were more or less saying that, like, we know that our soil around our house is toxic because we test it. Um, But do we do we trust big business to be testing their soil and telling us the truth? Like things you're buying at the store probably also have toxins. The EPA allows a certain amount of toxins. You know, it's just normal at this point um, that there's a certain level of toxins everywhere. Um, So we're definitely killing ourselves um, for sure. 
Killing the Planet. It sounds like that movie might have had like that little twist where like the earth is fighting back, um, which makes sense. You know, you want to protect yourself. I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you for, for your, like, I haven't watched that movie either. Um, but you know, a lot of, a lot of these doom gloom movies are around <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and, um, yeah. yeah, to just kind of, I guess, um, add on to, to the points Koei Dosiri is making, it's like, it's that balance, right? Like we know that, um, there are different energies and spirits and life forms that surround us that not always maybe have like our our health in mind. Um, I think it was yeah, it was Koja C D that I remember having a phone call with with our other friend Maria and mm. and Koja C D was like, be careful for like the spirit guides that you call on because not all of them wanna actually help you out. You know what I mean? So just like I guess having that understanding of what kind of energies are around there and how it's actually trying to affect your being and your energy is, is important. And it's, it's, you know, you, you won't know what that feels like. I, I feel until you kind of put yourself into that practice of, of relating to and identifying the energies. So that's why Kuwa Jasidi, when um, the one was mentioning about like, you know, going out in your block and getting to know the plants around you and, and starting a relationship that way, identifying, naming, understanding their needs and their properties, um, these plants, you could start to kind of understand like what those energies mean and, and mm-hmm. how it can affect you. And there are some that are like destructive in nature in the sense of maybe that's a way it's protecting and healing itself from the bad things we put out into the world as well. So that, that harmony and the balance is always, is always the goal. Um, mm. Does anyone else have a comment or a question for Koja CD before um, the one starts this workshop with the sanitizer? I'm excited for that mm. for sure. I did want to say one other thing. You're talking about doom and gloom and a big part of what I do is change the narrative. Like there's a lot of, doom and gloom out there, which is totally just as well. But there's also still a lot of life and vibrance and support and helpers in the natural world and in the human world. So um, returning, like the word rematriation, I think we're all have the capability of returning to a more holistic, uh, more in balance. Um and getting that narrative, you know, really, I haven't watched the happening because it's it's not a narrative that I put into my body um, because it's hard to get those. It's hard to get anything out of your body once you got it in there. So just being uh, mindful of that. Perfectly stated. All right. Does anyone else have a question or comment or um, y'all want to get started on this? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're excited. I kind of pumped it up because I was like, yo, you can do this. You might be able to do this as your side hustle today. Sanitizer is hard to come by oh at the God. stores. <laughs> so true. The side hustle. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you want to go ahead and get started, Koji just TV and like I have my chat open and in case somebody raises a comment or a question or their hands, like, you know, I could I could let you know when that happens. So Perfect. Um, And I did want to do like a little bit of a disclaimer, Um, making medicine with a highly contagious viral infection in the world. um, There's some protocols, the precautionary protocols, and truly, even just on my own, it's been more of a process than I'm used to. So um, I'm kind of just going to have like bits and pieces and we're not, I'm not, there's no liquids. (laughs) There's no liquids. Um, so just so you know, um, I want to address fully, maybe not fully, but directly the racism going around, around the Asian community, around virus spreading and, um, the falseness of that viruses do not choose you based off of your demographics, your geological location, your genetics. 
um, viruses. And I think the way to combat that is to get educated. Viruses spread because of bodily fluids, um, non-blood fluids. So just our liquid fluids that come out of our nose and our mouth that we're secreting. Um, and then it's fluid to fluid. So you, you know, spit. I notice like when I laugh, I, there's a lot of projectile things. <laughs> so um, you laugh, your little spitlet pew, lands on something and it can live on a surface for three days, up to three days um, and contaminate others on that surface. And so if you touch a surface with a droplet or you're I don't know, you made out with someone, your fluids touched each other directly, um, or you touched a fluid and then you touched um, your face. So that is how this virus is spreading. It also is in your gastrointestinal tract, so it also is in feces. Um, so that, don't touch that, and then your face. <laughs> um, yes. So that said, precautionary things is you can make your own masks. They say you're holding it up to the light and you can't see through it. This is a bandana, so you need another layer because I can see through my bandana. But you're covering your nose and your mouth. And, you know, you usually want something up over your ears to hold it in place. These are really great holders. Um, yeah, so... I didn't think it would be easy to talk with my mask on either, so that's why I also foregoed doing something a little bit more. And then the virus can live dormant in your body for up to two weeks. Um, so if you do go out or travel or feel like you got contaminated, um, that is in your body for up to 14 days and to be aware of that with who you're hanging out with. Um, People are wearing gloves. I also want to precaution that once your glove touches a fluid, it can also spread things. So um, I might not wear gloves as much as they tell me to because they seem just like hands. <laughs> um, so that is up to you, of course, with your safety levels. Um, let's get to it. So, I was showing you things out of this zine that I wrote, Wild Wisdom. And now we're going to switch to this first aid to face adversity zine. Like, I don't know if this light is helping or what. 